Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Give him all the honor. King of kings. Go ahead and bless him, mighty God. Are you giving him praise? Mighty army rising indeed. Celebrate him for his faithfulness. Extol his name forever. Lord, we bless you for the privilege to be part of your program thank you thank you for your manifold grace upon our lives someone is thanking him give him quality thanks give him quality thanks for his goodness for his faithfulness he has done all things well and to him be all the glory even tonight now cry with a heart of desperation give me an encounter tonight give me an encounter tonight an encounter that will change my life is a believer praying cry unto the god of all grace give me an encounter tonight Hallelujah. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. They go, they go, they never stay when they appear, they go, they move from strength to strength, strength to strength. Yes, the world. We'll bow down and say you are God Every man Will bow down and say you are King So let's start right now Why would we wait? You're the King God Glory, feel this place, just want to be with you, just want to be with you, sing King of Glory, King of Glory, Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will breathe upon us tonight. Let your word come with power to lift, to transform, to heal, to deliver. To Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. And then you may please be seated. You may please be seated. Oh God. You are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever love you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever follow I will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your ways Step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days Step by step you lead me And I will follow you
the believers journey in this kingdom is likened to the journey of the nation of Israel from Egypt there were two phases to that journey number one was coming out of Egypt so the first dimension of that journey was a focus on deliverance to be free from Pharaoh and to be free from the oppression of the Egyptians then the second dimension of the journey was the focus of entering into the promised land are we together they didn't start with the focus of entering into the John the promised land their initial desire was to come out of this place of oppression they had been oppressed for 430 years and their desire was to by all means get out of Egypt and when they got out of Egypt there were two processes processes to that deliverance number one was the initial exodus and then number two the drowning of Pharaoh and his horsemen to give them total freedom from the influence of the Egyptians all of that entire journey explains how a believer grows until he comes into the fullness of his inheritance everybody by default starts as a slave in Egypt a slave to Satan sin Satan hell causes darkness everything you can find in Egypt and then a word of deliverance comes likened to your salvation and then that initial exodus a translation you literally leave that place there is a translocation even though this happens in the spirit but because you have left Egypt does not mean Pharaoh will leave you are we together so Pharaoh saddled his horses and the riders and they began to pursue them and then the nation of Israel came to the Red Sea the Red Sea in front of them the Egyptians behind them and then the water had to part hither and thither, and they passed through it on dry ground and then the water drowned the nation of Egypt together with Pharaoh and that was the end of it but not the end of the journey from the time Pharaoh and Egypt were dealt with the next port of call was no longer threat from Egypt are we together it was accuracy of perception so that they will arrive the promised land do you know what Pharaoh could not do what the chariots could not do their carelessness of perception did to them what swords could not do what a trained army could not do a trained army could not stop their advancement but something within themselves stopped them from entering the promised land that means in this business of transition until you become the full portrait of the believer it is not all about satan and curses and sin all those can be dealt with and yet you will be surprised that you will never grow to step into the fullness of your inheritance because the problem of israel was not pharaoh alone it started with pharaoh it started with egypt but there was more they forgot that they were also part of their problems because when pharaoh had gone and when egypt had gone they were still not free by themselves they began to put pressure upon aaron and say build us a golden calf they were not pressured by pharaoh they were not pressured by egypt on their own accord moses goes up the mountain to meet with god and to receive commandment for them and moses is on his way back and he hears the voice of merriment and he said what is going on here and he comes into the camp and sees that the gold the treasure that they left with that was supposed to be for the building of the tabernacle and for their own prosperity they converted it and they served Satan they built a golden calf and began to dance around it can you imagine how distracted they could be that a people who left with a very clear vision to take you out of Egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will serve the Lord the mandates that advocated the deliverance was very clear let my people go that they may go and serve me that means until you have that full liberty the journey is not ended but the people distracted themselves by themselves there was no record that someone came outside of the camp to influence their decision Pharaoh was not there Egypt was no longer there the story of slavery had gone and yet 
there was a programming within them that still gave Satan an edge. Most believers think when Satan and demons and curses and oppressions are dealt with, they are immediately free. It is not entirely so. The story of the nation of Israel should teach you that truly Pharaoh can give way. Truly the armies can give way. The Red Sea can even part for you. And yet it is no guarantee that you will enter the promised land. Of that generation, can you imagine that only two people, these were people who saw the hand of God, their clothes did not tear, their shoes grew with them, the Bible says, and yet they didn't enter the promised land. Only Joshua and Caleb entered the promised land. Hallelujah. What does that mean? You can be saved, genuinely saved. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost, genuinely filled with the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Yeah. You can be righteous, holy, loving the Lord, and sincerely so, but never come into the fullness of your inheritance in Christ. It was for this reason God gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Listen carefully. For the maturing, the equipping of the saints, the perfecting of the saints, that through maturity, the saints will be able to attain a state in the spirit called the stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ. And that when they attain to that state, they will no longer be tossed through and fro by the slight of men. So every week as you come to church, realize that you are not just coming for deliverance from demons. I know that you have enough spiritual intelligence. You have been trained enough to know that the business of encounter with God is not always about Satan and demons and deliverance and curses. There is a place for that. Like a hospital, there are different departments in the hospital. Are we together? There's a place for children and it remains there is a place for women there is a place for men there's a place for bone conditions there's a place you know the icu all of those places that's what makes a hospital so in every service even if god is dealing with mature people he's aware that there are children who have also come to church so there will usually be an expression that ministers to them but i can tell you this god's goal is not just to set you free in experience from demons and satan and principalities and yokes there is a place for that but that when you are done with those things you now begin to press there is a promised land the bible calls it the inheritance of the saints in light and like you'll be learning tonight i need to prepare your heart because there are many believers we come from different places and we have sustained all kinds of orientations from where we come from and uh, with all due respect there are people who every time they appear before the lord all that they think god wants to do in their life is to cast out the next demon or cast out the next spirit or take away the next yoke or the next curse now i'm not i'm not speaking against that i will minister that for as long as i live to everyone in need of healing he will receive healing in anyone everyone who needs deliverance you will have that for sure but i'm telling you that god's greater goal is not to free you from curses and yokes and demons all of those ones is to allow you the liberty to now begin to conform and to grow and to become that portrait are we together now of the believer and the witness in christ if you do not know this your your expectation would already be corrupted because with all due respect there are many christian circles where believers are not told that they have the responsibility of working with the holy spirit to make for their growth and their maturity are we together so largely it's an affair of coming as a helpless believer looking up to a man of god sometimes almost to idolatry and hoping that the person by some prophetic declaration or releasing the anointing will get you free from the demon that has come upon you for that week not knowing what will happen by the next week you see if you train believers that way they will remain stunted they will remain weak the burden will be so much upon you as a man of god there is a pathway that leads anyone 
to a place of maturity in the spirit and every man of God must account unto God eventually not in the sweet by and by that God will say I gave you 10 people and they've been with you for three years justify their growth you have to explain to God it is the basis of your promotion in the spirit you cannot tell him give me more oil more anointing expand me God will come and say I gave you five talent I gave you two I gave you one before you talk of trusting you with something else show me what you did with the five talent and you say you gave me five I've made five more I increase the value are we together if you are a preacher here let me encourage you in righteousness don't maintain followers build champions out of ordinary believers and there is a pathway there is an intelligence that is responsible for the transition of ordinary people from unbelievers to believers to transformed believers to empowered believers to witnesses witnesses unbelievers babes in Christ transformed believers empowered believers witnesses until that journey you must get to that end point where everybody God has now trusted you with becomes on his own by himself every member of every church should receive the training of a man of God it shouldn't be an exclusive reserve for a few people because they are going to be pastors everyone is a minister and then from among those people a few people are selected to serve at the altar but that everyone who is part of any growing ministry they should be so furnished that men should begin to call you a minister whether you are a businessman because of how full you are of the word of God the level of intelligence and the grace that flows through your transformation this is what is happening to you here so don't think you are just coming for a regular service to sit down here man of God let's hear what he has today and then you enjoy it if it's nice you say I agree with this and debate over it no it's a project God is doing something with your life for the sake of your destiny you believe that say amen, amen. your assignment is to submit to the transforming power of his word your assignment is to sit with your heart open, ready for your capacity to be enlightened, to be enlarged, ready for your mind to receive illumination at a higher dimension. My assignment is to expose you to the truths, the bodies of knowledge, the light that is required to transit you through these various phases. There are some of you here who are unbelievers. There is a provision for you tonight. There are those who are babes in Christ. You are saved. But there's no maturity you cannot handle the things of righteousness the reason is because you are unfruitful in spiritual things welcome to church there are those who are contending steadily for transformation most people are in that category there are others who have attained a state of commendable transformation but what you need is empowerment empowerment helps you to give defense to the things that you know then there are those who have been empowered but vision is not yet clear you need to stay with the spirit of grace to now begin to allocate a space for you in God's program. Because if you are empowered and you serve another purpose outside of that which is in your script, it will still reduce you and deplete your efficiency. Are we learning now? So every time you come here, ladies and gentlemen, it is not the continuation of, you know, a service just honoring the program of a ministry. No. I have come before the God of all wisdom it is in your light that we see light are we together now your heart is open and large Lord what do you have for me today you can begin to imagine the levels in the spirit that you'll be scaling at the end of the service I'm leaving this service wiser I'm leaving this service more empowered something I did not know yesterday is about to be revealed to me or something I did not get well yesterday is about to be revealed to me you you know that the Holy Ghost is moving around not just to throw people up and down and cause people to shout he's breathing upon your mind he's is breathing upon your spirit are we together now this is how you are ascending in the spirit so the version of you that came to church can never be the version that returns no it's impossible not after you meet the king don't be careless every time you come to the presence of God it is my opportunity to grow it is my opportunity to transit 
it is my opportunity to learn the ways of God learn the ways of God in a way and manner that produces a powerful person can I lead you to pray one more time I actually had a prayer request for you but I'll give you this one first and then I'll give you the prayer request that I intended giving you and then we'll get to the word very fast I'd like you to pray and say father every dimension of grace I must step in today by reason of knowledge cause me to step in by your spirit go ahead pray every dimension of grace there is an allocation for every week there is an allocation for every service grace upon grace that which is due me today by mercy let it come upon me go ahead and pray someone who is serious with God is praying someone who is serious with his or her destiny is praying someone who is serious with the assignment God gave you is praying someone who is serious with your family serious with the matters that are at hand is praying unto the God of all grace one minute you are praying hallelujah hallelujah Yahweh we worship you hallelujah hallelujah Yahweh we worship you Kadosh 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 we worship you Kadosh, 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 we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship. Hallelujah. Now for your prayers tonight, it was a burden God put in my heart as I visited the various departments this week just to appraise what we're doing. The Lord put a strong burden in my heart. You're going to pray. The Lord has given us a prophetic word that this is our year of exceeding great rewards. I'd like you to place a demand by faith that Father, whatever should have manifested in my life according to this word, and is still pending tonight i came to church to place a demand in the name of jesus go ahead and pray i'm releasing my faith with you so that you will pray pray seriously this is still my year of exceeding great rewards he told abraham i am your exceeding great reward go ahead and pray every dimension of light dimension of grace dimension of increase prosperity your benefits yet to be captured in my life I cry in the name of Jesus Christ someone pray if he's spoken it it is within his power to make it happen in the name of Jesus take a minute to place a demand our family following globally online place a demand we are praying now you're releasing your faith you're releasing your faith you're releasing your faith Lord you have given a prophetic declaration that this for me is a season to experience exceeding great reward I open up my heart to receive I am a receiver tonight I open up my heart to receive in the name of Jesus I receive your benefits I receive your benefits salvation for my soul healing for my soul and body deliverance from any and all calamities honor in all its ramifications satisfying my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles I place a demand by faith I place a demand by faith I agree with the spirit 
I am that bride that comes in partnership with the Spirit, telling the word to come, the word of healing come, the word of lifting come, the word of exaltation come, the word of new seasons, new levels come. I cannot have a better yesterday. The path of the justice as a shining light that shine more and more brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. I place a demand by faith. Are you still taking a minute to pray? My portion in the name of Jesus, let it be delivered by faith. Even this month, even in this season, my portion my allocation in prophecy hey palato shaprande geparatos kiata for someone you need to add to this prayer lord do a quick walk for my sake for the sake of your name do a quick walk oh let it appear quickly the blessing let it appear quickly the favor let it appear quickly in the name of jesus my encounter with fresh oil let it appear quickly the king's business requires haste let it appear quickly in jesus mighty name we pray pray for you that this week will be a week of surprises in the name of jesus that lord the lord will honor his name in your life in jesus mighty name we pray please be seated let's give jesus a big hand clap we didn't have the time to greet one another god bless you good evening it's good to see you in church i want to appreciate everyone who has come to fellowship with us tonight your life will never be the same in the name of jesus we're honored to have in our midst dr doing okupe god bless you sir god bless you let's bless you thank you so much it's an honor Thank you. Tonight we're doing Ephesians chapter 3. I want to show you a mystery as we pray. We're discussing the power that works in us. The power that works in us. My assignment tonight by the Spirit is to further align you to host this holy oil. This grace that is pouring from Christ who is the head of the church the Bible likens it in Psalm 133 it says how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity he said it is like the oil that comes upon Aaron the priest in this case we know that it's not just a man of God he's talking about the head of the church is Christ are we together the foundation of the church and that it comes to his beard to his skirt and then the Bible says, For there God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. And so my assignment is to align us. I can tell you that God is pouring various levels of His graces and His anointing afresh again. Yes, sir. And it is not just limited to those in ministry. Every once and again, it's like a thousand cubits is measured. And God begins to grant access to that grace, the investment of the Holy Spirit. But only those who are discerning, very discerning, and know how to align to the rules of the season. There are rules for every season that help you to be a greater host of God's power and God's glory. And in continuation, of my commitment to our growth and transformation i want to show you a very powerful mystery tonight ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. we'll read 20 and 21 and then i'll begin to teach the lord help us in the name of jesus now unto him i like paul now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us verse 21 unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen hallelujah now 
to understand what Paul was saying, Paul is a very intelligent person. Aside being a man of God and an apostle, he was a very learned individual. He was a doctor of the law. And so he had a unique ability to articulate the thoughts of the spirit with such intelligence, such that the people will understand. And Paul here, when you read Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 2, he began his exegesis by helping the believers understand what Christ had done. Then when we get to chapter 2, he now brings the believer through the theological mystery called identification. He now tells us that everything I told you that was wrought in Christ was not wrought by him for himself and alone, that we have been made partakers. Are we together? Now he begins to bring us into the picture that everything that Christ wrought on account of his death, burial, and resurrection, the believer, by the mystery of identification, has been a partaker of that reality. And that if you believe and walk in keeping with the truths that support that condition, it can be made manifest in your life here and now. Then when we get to Ephesians chapter 3, very, very interesting discussion because in chapter 3, he, he gives a very sound, chapter 3 was a defense of his apostleship because he was about to delve into deeper and weightier spiritual matters and he needed to digress for a moment and to, um, for want of word, do a presentation of his credentials to let the people know that even though what you're about to hear may be a bit difficult out of the norm i want you to trust the person speaking to you that the the credence the qualification by which i speak to you of is is that i've been trusted to be a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom you find that in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3 so paul is giving us a a a basis he's defending what he's about to teach them that no matter how difficult, no matter how seeming controversial you find it, do not doubt the credence of the person teaching you. That I got what I got by revelation. Give it to us, please. Verse 3. Ephesians 3, 3. I'm just putting a background so you will understand 20 and 21. How that by revelation, in fact, let's back up to verse 2. He talks of the dispensation of the grace. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word meaning for your sake verse 3 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote aforetime in few words that means it is a continuation of a discussion he had started verse 4 the intent now whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 he says, this knowledge which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. Sounds like an arrogant statement, but he's trying to be as modest to help them know that, listen, you may hear things that you have not heard before. Do not think it to be a controversy. I was given access by grace. How that by revelation, this mystery of Christ was given to me. And now I'm revealing it to you. And it says, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Jump to verse 9, please. He's still making defense. And he's saying that that grace is to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Christ. And then he does a few other, you know, presentations. Then when we get to verse 20, he says, Now unto him, the him who had called me into this apostleship, the him who granted me by his spirit access to these mysteries. Are we together? He says, Now unto that him, and I hope you know that to understand verse 20, you have to ignore 20 and go to verse 21. You cannot understand verse 20 until you understand verse 21. So let's go to 21. He says, unto him. This was what he was trying to say. Unto that him. 20 and 21 was just giving God glory as his final salutation for chapter 3. But he digressed to bring perspective to that him unto him be glory he would have skipped 20 and just gone from 19 to 21 he still would have been correct 
his digression gave us an added information that there is something about this hymn I want you to know but the goal verse 21 is that you give him glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages but then he gives us a little knowledge about the hymn back to verse 20 and here's what he says unto him that this hymn has ability to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think and he says that happens according to the power that is in us so we'll be working a few things here as god will grant us grace are you ready to learn now number one the central message in chapter 20 and 21 of ephesians chapter 3 from a doctrinal standpoint the central message is that of glorifying jesus so he is saying here that unto him be the glory the, the central message really from 20 and 21 is not about power it's not about ability he's trying to give god glory unto him be the glory in the church by christ jesus now this is consistent with the flow of scripture because the bible tells us every once and again in scripture that all things were made for god's glory all things all things were made for his glory psalm 148 please we're looking at a few things from this scripture that will help our growth tonight and that number one the central theme in chapter 20 and 21 was that of giving god glory glorifying the christ psalm 148 from verse 1 praise ye the lord praise ye the lord from the heavens praise him in the heights okay verse 2 media let's work together let's hurry up praise ye him all his angels he says praise him all his hosts notice i want you to notice the various creatures that praise him this is the entire creation captured in this chapter verse 3 he says praise him sun and moon so he started by talking of angels creation now even the sun and the moon is mandated to praise him not even the stars are spared verse 4 he says praise him ye heaven of heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens the firmament created for his glory to praise him verse 5 let them praise the name of the lord for he commanded and they were created verse 6 he says he had also established them forever and ever and had made a decree which shall not pass seven we're reading down to 14 he says praise the lord from the earth ye dragons and all the deep he's talking about sea creatures are you seeing that f is like a roll call and when that roll call is made he's saying i demand praise as the creator from you son where is your praise moon where is your praise now he goes to the sea and he's talking about all the deep sea creatures now the bible um uses a lot of similes and metaphors so when it says dragon it doesn't necessarily mean dragon as it where it's just a capture a name a representation of all kinds of creatures are we together verse 8 it says fire and hail snow and vapor stormy wind fulfilling his word verse 9 mountains and all hills fruitful trees and all cedars verse 10 beasts and all cattle creeping things and flying fowl uh-huh kings of the earth now he comes to men and all people and princes and all judges of the earth 11 or 12 now it says both young men and maidens both old men and children 13 it says let them praise the name of the lord for his name alone is excellent his glory is above the earth and the heavens final verse it says he he also exalted the horn of his people and the praise of all his saints even of the children of israel a people near unto him everyone and everything praise ye the lord the bible will simply put it in one sentence let everything that has breath praise the lord you know what that means everything is alive including what biology says is dead because it says let everything that has breath based on the authority of scripture we know that science has not yet grown to a point where you can prove 
we know and we have learned for ages that there are living things and there are non-living things and that is correct from our frame of knowledge but from a spiritual standpoint if everything came out of God then it must be alive are we together now the proof that everything has life is found in John chapter 1 and verse 3 then Colossians 1 and verse 16 the Bible says without him was not anything made that was made then Colossians 1 and verse 16 says that he everything by him were all things created how many things nothing comes from the word and comes dead are we together now let everything that has breath praise the Lord we're still examining Paul's thoughts so that the central message in chapter 20 and 21 is that of glorifying the Lord Romans chapter 11 and verse 36 we sing it all the time in this place and it says for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever amen of him through him to him are all things he says to whom be glory forever so God is deserving of our glory and I pray in the name of Jesus that as you listen as you learn as you contend for growth may your life give God great glory all through your lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ say in my life be glorified one more time say in my life be glorified so God desires glory but let's go to verse 21 in as much as all creation have a mandate to glorify the Lord Ephesians 3 21 there seems to be a desperate desire from God to be glorified uniquely by the church are we together so the subject of giving God glory is a mandate to all creation both animate and inanimate things as we call living and non-living things let everything that has breath praise the Lord but there is a dimension of praise and glory keep the scripture there please a dimension of praise and glory that only the church it says unto him be glory in the church in the church the ecclesia the body of saved and sanctified believers there is a dimension of glory only the saints Plants cannot bring that dimension of glory to God. Are we together? The trees, as beautiful as they are, the oceans, the, you know, the sun, the moon, and elemental forces cannot bring God that level of glory. The reason is because none of them were created in his image and likeness. So he says there is a dimension of glory that he demands from the church. And Paul is saying here that unto him be glory. Let that glory that is due him that should come from the church. I pray that our generation will answer this prayer. That glory will come to the Lord, to the Lord from the church. By Christ Jesus throughout all ages. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The second thing I want us to learn very quickly is Paul in speaking about the desire to bring God glory now digresses to verse 20 and he tells us the extent of God's ability verse 20 is as though Paul was taking a quick digress to flaunt the glory of this one to help us appreciate the kind of God that he was talking about he says now unto him that is able so Paul is talking about ability here I hope you know that the greatness of God's and spirit figures in ancient times was was measured by their ability ability was the singular um, yardstick for measuring the greatness of any deity so you were purported as a deity to be great to the degree to which you were able to allow your ability to be on display so they had those that were called the prophets of Baal until they were disappointed at Mount Carmel, they had produced a semblance of result to a point that they were prophets that were trained in honor to that deity. The nation of is uh, I mean, Egypt had several deities and several gods, and all through scripture, you will read of several kinds of gods, all of them purporting to have ability in some way. Now, Paul is speaking about this God, and he's saying unto him who is able. 
but he shows you the extent and the vastness of his ability that he is able to do exceeding exceeding surpassing abundantly he is lavish in his ability and that he can go past your expectations he can go past your desire that god is able to do above all listen and learn above all that we ask or think my god all that we ask or think all that we ask or think no matter what you ask God or plan to ask God whether it is eventually answered or not he's saying settle it that anytime there is a a lack of manifestation result God's ability should never be part of what you diagnose as the problem because as far as God's ability is concerned that he sustains such power to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and even the things that are so wild in our imaginations we dare not have the courage to ask that God is able to do that someone say God is able say it again God is able let faith rise as you say it say God is able it's up to your faith to fill in the blank. He's able to lead me to the place of safety. He's able to bring me to my destiny helpers. He's able to open doors for me. He's able to make a river in the wilderness. Are we together now? He's able to turn my mourning to dancing. He's able to turn my sorrow to joy. He says that you must know when you come to God, you must come believing that he exists. And Paul now is bringing perspective that he does not just exist, but he is able. One more time, say he's able. Yeah. This is very powerful. Anytime you are sent, you want to be able to know and gauge the might of the one who sent you. And generally speaking, as we teach here in life, in our world today, um, the level of might of the one who sent you, whether financial might, political might, are we together? economic might and so on is where you derive your boldness from if the ceo of a bank or the owner of a mall tells me to get into his mall and to shop i step in there with confidence and if the manager or the foreman or someone tries to harass me my confidence is derived from the fact that number one i know the owner of that shopping mall number two i am aware that he's given me access to shop as much as i want is someone learning now so anybody of lesser power lesser ranking that confronts me i don't stand conscious of my ability i stand conscious of the ability of the one who sent me and sometimes i can look at the manager with every sense of sincerity and say mr man if you don't leave this place you can lose your job for nothing you don't know who sent me and you say that with such confidence they see you dragging all kinds of trolleys in honor to the power of the one who sent you but if you met a stranger in the mall and he says look i have maybe ten thousand naira and uh, let's share five five thousand naira there are there are places in that mall you will not go to are we together because you are aware that going there uh, is is a lot of embarrassment it will cost you and number two they may even go and jail you because you will carry a lot of things that you do not have the ability to pay for and the one who supports you does not have the ability to pay for let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen there is no request that comes before the throne that causes god to worry are we together there are things that men say you have asked for a hard thing when Elijah asked Elijah for a double portion, he said, Ah, you have asked a hard thing. It is possible, but it is not easy. But the God of heaven has such ability. There is nothing within the imagination of man. Now, you need to listen to a professor of science say, or a philosopher or a psychologist, or all three of them, sit together to discuss to your hearing the level of intelligence are we together and the potentials that are resident within a human mind when it is developed everything you see on earth today came as a product of the intelligence the mental capability of men from the highest buildings the most dexterous expressions of you know civilization everything came from the mind of man and the bible is telling us that god is able to do 
God is building someone's faith. So when you are making it look like God, okay, if this is too much, let me reduce it because it looks like you are afraid of my request. He leads you to this sermon and leads you to this scripture. Now unto him. And he says, let's not gloss and trivialize that him. There is something about that him I need you to know. Because when you know it is connected to your giving him glory. That if you are not aware that this him has the power. There is such power that resides with him. It will be difficult for the church to give him glory. So the church birthing glory and bringing glory to the name of the Lord. Is connected to their understanding of the exceeding greatness of his power. Are we together? I have learned from scripture and I have learned from experience that your confidence as you sojourn this spirit life is directly derived not just from your encounter with God but your awareness of how mighty and how powerful he is. I trace my life today to many encounters, not just encounters of God but certain things that I've seen about God from scripture and from visions and experiences that shook away unbelief. I cannot undo it again. There are things I will never be afraid of forever because of the dimension of God's power that I saw. Are we together? Yes. There are things that God does in your life. It becomes sin, unique sin to you to doubt him because you would have seen too much. Let me tell you this. When God wants to build the faith of a man, he exposes you to a level of his power you have never seen. And that dimension pounds every unbelief. You begin to repent before him. That was how he drew Peter in John chapter 21. Peter had gone fishing. He had tried and tried, did not catch anything. And he simply told him, cast your net. And when Peter caught fish, he said, no, who else can do this? He said, I'm a sinner. Don't come close to me. You are going to remind me now that you had the same power to save me. If you had the power to bring fish out of nothing, I would have trusted you. So it was, it was that miracle was probing his unbelief. According to the power. We're coming there. But it's important for you to know that God is all powerful. And you know, when, when I speak like this, I submit to you sincerely that the church has not really seen certain apostolic dimensions of the power of God. Our description of power has largely been limited to impartations, limited to financial provisions, and these things are not wrong. But you need to read the Bible to really see things that were not parables. They were manifestations of the power of this great God. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I, I wish it were a lie so that I just keep it through, but it was true. The things that were done before Jesus, the word incarnate arrived, and the things that were done through his hand as he walked upon the earth. What manner of man is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. You read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, and see a display of God's power in a very fearful way. I've read my Bible. And you want to read it poetically, go to the book of Psalms. My goodness, David did justice to our understanding. He plays with poetry as he paints all kinds of picture, frustrating your unbelief as you read from chapter to chapter. God for you. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no bondage you cannot break. If you have said it, then you will do it. You, you have, have a track record of keeping it well. And you're, you're not, not about to stop doing it. Listen, let me pause for a moment and challenge someone. Don't be too used to pain. God is greater. Don't be too used to defeat, frustration. God is greater. Don't be too used to your condition. You know, 
pain can force you to a point where you build a theology to just keep you comfortable and you say you know what I've exhausted all my options one thing I know for sure is yes God is mighty but your mind through pain can reject certain dimensions of God's power that the day you hear a man of God say in the name of Jesus you know doors open or whatever your heart selects what to say amen to even though your mouth is shouting amen to everything but in the realm of the spirit you are literally cherry picking a few realities from the lens of your understanding of God. God is mighty. Oh. He really is. Read your Bible and see a display of his power. I'm praying. I don't know, but it's a personal request. May God do one of those things he did in the Bible in our days. Just one. Just one spectacular manifestation that can last us. We can literally hold on to that experience as a vehicle to drive our faith to a point of maturity where we can trust God. Hallelujah. I wonder what would happen if one of those patriarchs, one of those saints, I know that they will come if they were to suddenly appear in our world. They will be shocked at our technological advancements. They will be shocked at whatever, but they will also be shocked at our unbelief. They will be shocked at the aircraft that a man can build metals and can carry him for hours from one side of the world to the other. They will be shocked at the fact that with one dial, you can make a call and someone at any end of the world can receive. They will be shocked. But one thing they will be shocked of too is our level of unbelief in the midst of evidences as so. Hallelujah. To him be the glory by the church but before you talk of bringing God glory you have to know that this him has an ability to do there are men who have the ability to say but they do not have the ability to do they can say what they want to do they can say what they wish to do but they do not have the wherewithal to make it happen hallelujah I've seen the power of God in my life I've seen God heal me. I've seen God deliver me. I've seen God help me by his mercy. As I travel by his mercy from nation to nation, I've been exposed to a bit of his power. I've seen God do remarkable things in my life. And it has enhanced my faith. Let me tell you this. The faith problem or the faith issue was never supposed to be an endless lecture trying to prime people to prime people. The reason why we keep having to labor on people without them understanding is because we, there is scarceness in seeing the genuine apostolic power revealed. When we talk of power, if someone starts shouting up and down now, people say, ah, there's power in this place and you are right. But the kind of power we are talking about is this dimension that imports realities from a realm outside of this realm and brings them and makes it visible. 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 God. You see, but this Bible, read it all. Read it. Read it. Honestly. How does a prophet stand over a nation? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to, in, to insult priesthood. But one prophet stood over a nation, not a parable, and said, by this time tomorrow, overturn the economy of a nation. And yet we tell ourselves we are priests after the Melchizedek order. And with all due respect, look at the economic situations. And yet we do not have the wherewithal. We have said by this time tomorrow, many times. And what happened tomorrow was not funny. Power for you. All by the same God, oh. All by the same God. That they kept the ark and kept Dagon and closed the door. No prayer warrior was praying there. Nobody was fasting. The ark was just kept there. Another demonic altar was kept there. Now you say the ark is inside you. And we are not seeing Dagon falling. I'm showing you power from scripture. The exceeding greatness of his power. I'm just sharing with you my contemplations. 
how do you put an ark and then you put Dagon and shut the door so there's no manipulation by morning you come and find Dagon falling face forward because everything bows everything bows including inanimate things and now today we claim that he's giving us power authority and yet if we are to be honest the realm of the spirit does not seem to met out that level of respect for the average believer glory in the church not glory around creation ladies and gentlemen if I stand before a sea that wants to destroy a particular state in Nigeria and I command the water to reverse not part reverse by the same power Moses used if it does happen Jesus will not be glorified I will be persecuted till I die by what power did you tell a dam that is about to destroy a state and you stood claiming you are a priest and yet many times we say we are greater than Moses be careful oh was not a parable frail man stammerer but power he stood in front of the Red Sea and straight be a man who had met God he said I have made you a God unto Pharaoh is that in your Bible I'm showing you Paul's burden Paul's prayer that every believer that wants to bring glory to God at this end time you must understand the exceeding greatness of his power Moses stood before the Red Sea in front of over 2.5 million people and parted the Red Sea I don't know if you understand that miracle an ocean part heater and theta creates walls This is the God we serve. If I wear my shoe now as a Christian and my shoe does not fade, does not grow old and grows with my leg, you will most likely call me a herbalist. Say, no way, it's impossible. I'm, I'm just showing you the standard. Is the reason why it is so difficult to bet a little miracle. And if that miracle does arrive, we idolize that miracle. But I believe that before Christ returns, maybe not everybody, but there are a few people that will press past this curtain and tear that veil and say, Lord, demonstrate your power. Oh. Come and manifest your power today. Oh. Come and manifest your power today. Oh. oh, God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Oh God of signs, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Let me tell you this. There were people who walked upon this our earth. I tell you, they, they literally were men who were the it was it was worthy to fear them these guys use words to change climates I don't know what kind of human being they were human beings they were imagine having that kind of power there are a few people here and there in our dispensation that demonstrated the power men like Apostle Babalola they stepped into you know Archbishop Benson Idahosa and others that history did not do justice to capture them but you see I am personally tired of every talking about Apostle Babalola he's dead Archbishop Benson Idahosa he's dead but you are alive you and the God that empowered him he's alive forever we talk a lot and sometimes we use it to just call cheap points Oh, once upon a time, Apostle Babalola, he matched a rock and an angel. There's the imprint, there, Mr. Man. If the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, 
what is the testimony of our own generation you see they captured dimensions of God and immortalized their impact even though they've gone we cannot forget them because an imprint of their encounter remains upon the earth this generation must also have something that our children will say if you doubt that this our fathers knew God this is the evidence they found him they trapped a dimension of his power I'm just imagining in my mind that suddenly Jesus were to appear here and then some of the patriarchs and imagine that Paul just collected the mic from me I'm not idolizing him you will be surprised my goodness Paul these were guys that will be preaching someone will fall and die they will raise the person up and continue the lecture power exceeding greatness of his power steps into a land and sees a damsel with the spirit of divination most of us will partner with the girl immediately making ministry easy but by discernment he said no something is wrong got that demon out immediately that you caught a man ladies and gentlemen now please don't feel offended but imagine that someone was kidnapped and physically angels came is that not what happened in acts chapter 12 came and picked him all the people were like dead men picked him walked away with him imagine that someone is missing and while you are praying he knocks the door and says i just came out of somewhere in nasarawa state who brought you out an angel you will most likely not believe we talk a lot about angels because we have not seen them some of us the day you see an angel you will cast the angel and pray that you will never come again I'm priming your hunger we need to press for more I'm telling you let's stop recycling shadows around ourselves the kind of end time ministry God is mandating that will bring him glory will have to be a display of power beyond shouting beyond falling down beyond rolling those things are elementary levels there are weightier dimensions where God sends a man to a family for two days as you step into that family everything literally what is wrong with this man cancer stage four I bring you life stand up immediately that someone will go to the hospitals I know we, 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 we chant it like a recitation and leave it there. You want to see God glorified? One genuine display of his power, I tell you, will bring more souls than many crusades combined. It is true. Listen, if the call of God is upon your life here, listen, don't be in a hurry to just jump into ministry. The bar has gone higher. That thing you think will bring members, you will waste your time. People are hungry, thirsty, desperate. They want to see the living God because other idols are now convincing them. They have gone to some idol somewhere. There is a hundred year old deity in the village somewhere. Even though you are telling them not to serve idols. But every time they are hungry, the idol gave them food. Now you are saying there is a God that is above them. They are saying show it all. Let there be a manifestation. Let there be a manifestation. My grandmother had children. They will say 25, 26 children as one woman because of her worship to that idol. And now you come carrying your Bible, your concordance, and you say, I am a new creation in Christ. My brother, demonstrate it. Before you are made a graduate, there is something called defense. Huh? so all your topics and all your learning you sit before those who accredit you and they listen to you while you speak and say all kinds of things they ask you a few questions then they say okay fine most of us that interview you see we have failed it again and again and again because you've not been able to bring defense to the name of the Lord come and manifest your power today Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Oluwadi.
of his power spectacular manifestations of his glory do you know what happens when your word truly becomes like the word of God that when you speak to people they know it will come to pass because you told them that you come from his presence when Zechariah doubted Gabriel he said I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God we like come from his presence with falsehood. It's an insult to his presence. You mean his presence could not judge falsehood. And I arrived here with falsehood. I am Gabriel. If you don't respect me, respect where I'm coming from. I stand in the presence of God. Not everybody can stand in his presence. So I am Gabriel. I've been given access to stand in his presence. There is a purifying that his presence does. There is no guile in my lips. If I bring you a word, trust it. And most of us claim not just that we are standing in his presence. We say he is in us. But the truth is the results don't show. Can I lead you to cry in one minute? Father, let my life manifest your power. Let my life, let my life manifest your power. Not just shouting and falling down. Genuine manifestations of the God life released through me bringing many to salvation you are a transmuter of the benefits the benefits that are in God forgiveness healing deliverance honor prosperity through your life take a minute to pray Rateke parantos cote brande que berretos calibras. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Please be seated. So, two things now. Number one, from that scripture, we are saying the central message in chapter 20 and 21 is about giving God glory. And that all creation, everything God created has a mandate to give him glory. But that there is a dimension of glory God is looking forward to receiving from the church. To be glorified in the church by Christ Jesus. And then number two, that Paul now begins to go further in verse 20 to talk about the extent of God's ability. The greatness of our God. Now, listen to this. I wrote something here. I said the limitations... In our results is not a problem with God's ability the limitation in our results is not a problem of or a problem with God's ability that means in diagnosing why the riches of the God life does not flow through you rule out the subject of God's incompetence it is not part of the it's not part of the the considerations never never for once allow your mind to think that it is because God was incapable that certain results did not happen. Mm -mm. Let that never be your consideration. In diagnosing why the manifestation of his power and grace is limited in your life and my life, rule out any incompetence on the part of God. It is never a power problem. If the sick are not healed, it is not a power problem from God. If the oppressed are not delivered, if the prophetic word that comes, whether through his servant or wherever, does not come to pass, I'm saying in diagnosing what may have gone wrong, rule out the fact that it was incompetence on God's part. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think. Apostle, why am I still looking for a job till now? Whatever the answer is, let's explore together from scripture. But one thing you need to rule out 
is the fact that it was never incompetence. It is not that the problem overwhelmed God. He had no solution and then he just kept quiet to protect himself. No, sir. Never had he been confronted with a situation that surmounted his power. There are times, like you'll be learning, that his power does not flow. There are times that his power will not flow, but it is not an issue of incompetence. Look at me. If your tap at home does not flow out with water, it is not a damn problem. Do you agree with me on that? It is not a damn problem. Not at all, not ever. If you at any point in your life try to open up a tap and you do not find water flowing, the problem is not the dam. No. The world today is fighting global warming because land space, land mass is being eaten by water. The ice is melting because of the atmospheric condition. Are we together? So there's abundance of water. But whether it can flow to your house to profit you is a dis another discussion all the same. But I'm saying in diagnosing why the power of God seems scarce within the world of men, within the body of Christ, and is stopping and shortchanging our potential of giving God glory. I'm saying in considering that, rule out incompetence from God's part. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not part of the considerations. The exceeding greatness of his power. My prayer for you as we continue is that one of these days, you will see the power of God show up in your life in a way that will humble you. You will see the power of God show up in your life that God will do something as a signature, signing it upon his, your life. It, it will be something that when you tell people the testimony, it becomes too notable that even your enemies will clap and say, I don't like you, but I can't deny this one. This one is the manifold workings of God. May it be your experience in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. By this time tomorrow, turns the economy of an entire nation in one day. That means there are other dimensions to the world's economic problems. There are economic solutions, but I tell you there are spiritual solutions. It's just that the saints have not yet ascended to that level. Are we together? How about problems of healthcare? My God, imagine with all due respect that every man of God accents this stature in the spirit where everybody within your circumference, even though you build your faith, yes, but that you have been able to stretch yourself in the spirit to carry heavier weights of that power. Nobody sits in your assembly and goes back sick. Miracle services will even end. we we'll use it for something else, maybe to pray or whatever it is. But look at the ratio of results we command, healing results, versus people who are genuinely sick. It's a call to press for more. Do you agree with me on that? It's a call to press for more. Do you know, I have to be honest with you here. As much as God has done so much through my life, and I'm grateful to be used by God in the way that he's used me and he's using me, sometimes I get provoked onto godliness. When I meet people who I once prayed for over a condition, are we together? And they see me later on and they say, well, we're still believing God for, you know, maybe healing of someone. And he says, well, I'm still trusting God. I take responsibility and go back and say, Lord, this is not a power problem. This is not a power problem. It is most likely an alignment problem. Something is wrong. There are results that I produce now by mercy. That I could not produce yesterday so I know that there are others I can produce that this version of me is not yet aligned enough who is learning yes I'm imagining what more koinonia can do for the glory of God what more we can do ladies and gentlemen that we are able to host God in such a way demonstrate the reality of God here and now without making all kinds of noise, noise that does not have proof. It is true that people are getting healed. But what of those dying without getting healed? And we know it is not their time. It is true that people are prospering. 
But what about the multitudes of genuine God lovers who keep shouting amen to prophetic words every week to a point right now that prophecy has become an object of mockery within the intellectual and economic community, justifiably so, because it's not yielded any results. Nobody would dare despise prophesying if you have empirical proof that by prophecy you help to navigate someone's life towards prosperity. Nobody will laugh at it. But right now it's become an issue of mockery, justifiably so. Receive amen, receive amen, receive amen. Next time the person cannot come to church because he's in jail. He did not work. Ah, may things change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When people lift their hands and shout amen, they only hope that it works because they have a record of disappointments and that disappointment has pierced their hearts too many times. I don't blame people when they say receive and they're just watching. Say, Let's round up please and leave this place. There's a track record of a seeming impotency of the word as it comes from the lips of we who claim to be his servants. We need to step up the bar. I can tell you one thing for sure. The power of God is as real as it was in the Bible. And I'm praying, join me in that prayer. I'm praying that in our lifetime, God will allow us by his mercy to be able to host greater dimensions of his power that will demonstrate it here and now that he's alive. You believe that? Say amen. amen. You believe it will happen through you? Say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if just to walk on your mind. Imagine that Jesus appeared to you now and placed his hand upon your hand and said, every sick body you know who is about to die, if you love them, go and place this hand. You know you will not be tired. Some of you will run straight to our general hospitals because there's someone you love so much who is about living. But do you know that there are people now? I, I, I'm just challenging you. This is an apostolic ministry. You don't go to the hospital to tell the doctor what is, is right with you. You tell the doctor what is wrong so they will correct it. You know how many prayer chains are happening over sick people right now while they are deteriorating till they die. And yet prayer chain is happening. Go and read the Bible what happened when they created a prayer chain. Angels came. Things changed. Where are those angels? They don't know the address to Nigeria or the nation is so sinful that they can't come. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more, gotta be more of this. Someone learning. Thank God for what He's helped us do. But I'm praying that we'll be that generation that will be honest with ourselves, not condemning ourselves, but knowing that the bar has been lifted in the spirit and we are largely short of it. We need to go back to God and say, Show us the formula, the real formula that controls the arrival of genuine apostolic power because for many people we have tried we have tried and just touched we are smelling smoke but the food that comes from the kitchen we've not been able to hold it we just suspect that you've been around the kitchen but where is the substance of that reality are we together now it's hopeful when you see someone smelling smoke it means you are closer to the kitchen but at a, you are not going to eat smoke. You will be hungry and you are waiting for the meal. And some people have been waiting forever. I'm praying that there are people who will pass be beyond the layer of religion and get to that point where you can take something of spiritual substance and bring to a generation and say, by mercy, I have found it. The key to an authentic healing ministry, the key to an authentic deliverance, the key to authentic breakthrough. May God push you to that realm in the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning now? Please sit down. The man who was writing about the power of God 
was not naive in the things of power. Paul was one person who did not just demonstrate power. He was the one who taught the body of Christ, the dimensions and the administration of spiritual power. Very few of the apostles touched the subject of power because it was a very delicate subject. It required maturity and experience. There are very, very few. The only other person who really spoke about power was Peter. But Paul single-handedly carried this doctrine of power and taught the Corinthian church, arranged the manifestations of the gift of the Spirit, showed why certain things were not working. Paul for you. It is the same Paul who is teaching the church in Ephesus. Now unto him who is able. Say it again, God is able. One more time, say God is able. Say he is able to do. Say it, he is able to do. Yes, to do means to lift. He is able to do means he is able to restore. He is able to bring laughter. He is able to heal. That someone who is right now dying, God has the power to lift him from the bed of affliction. Do you believe that? I remember it was said that Smith Wigglesworth, if I recall, that someone had passed on and he carried the person, jacked him up and punched the person once. The person fell down like a pack of cards, carried the person a second time, jacked him up, said in the name of Jesus. The third time, the person sneezed and came back to life. Power, no noise, genuine results. Maria Woodward Etide was told that she was in a conference like this and there were all kinds of people mocking her, mocking her and laughing at her. And she simply said, the Lord judge you. And one of them, the tongue protruded like cancer, stage four. Imagine cancer of the mouth like that. It stayed like that. Brethren prayed and nothing happened. It was told that they had to come, seek her, Pizal, apologize to her. And all she did was to slap the tongue and it went down men not not angels these are people who walked upon the earth documented i have watched some of the videos of these people i remember it was a. a allen i think he was a gentleman who had polio he was very widespread those days look at the genuine miracle you would watch a tl osborne crusade and you would see literally see metallic bracelets where people came to the crusade with a significant part of their feet shorter than the other they would not need the bracelet, the, 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 you know, whatever it is again, and they would throw it. I'm talking about healing miracles, not to talk of nature miracles. That they would tell them hurricanes and all kinds of nature disasters were coming. And they would stand single-handedly, not in a radio station. They would reverse it and it would pass. Question. Is it really the will of God for hurricanes and tornadoes to come? and destroy people destroy their means of livelihood and here we are believers saying we have been crowned with glory and honor and yet we are prayerful but it's not producing the power required it's not to discourage you to stop it's just to let you know that a bar has been lifted in the spirit and i'm here to call you tonight in the name of jesus christ that god is saying stop celebrating shadows let's press for substance there is a level of God's glory we need to be revealed. I have seen people healed. I have seen the manifestations of God's power. And for those that received those miracles, I know how we translated to salvation over their families. Listen to me. Evangelism is very difficult for us today because there is no evidence. And we have created all kinds of theological excuses to explain away the power of God. Do you know there is no generation that talks about power more than our generation. And yet we don't see it. Truly, everything power. Everything power. We have abused it. The word sounds irritating to the ears of an intelligent person. Because it's like a mockery of ourselves. But may God restore May God restore. May God restore. That you come to someone's house and the person tells you, you know what? All of us just lost our job, husband and wife, and we still love God in the midst of it. You say, I know. We love Jesus beyond that. But I am a child of God, a transmitter of his life. Let me bring you a reality beyond economy.
a reality beyond banking and finance in the name of Jesus I deposit the life of God in this house and you walk away and before you get home the person is calling you and saying I don't know what you did do you think people will even allow you to rest the way we labor over publicity begging people to come to church should it shows you that our formula should be suspicious it was never supposed to be that way the abundance of the demonstration of the spirit is the authorized way to draw people to Jesus draw people to Jesus that I'm speaking now and someone is seated and then you get a text message your family members are in a hurry to call you where are you you say I'm in church they say you need to pick what happened just to let you know that Baba on a wheelchair has stood up at home you mean it yes he stood up after five years of being on the wheelchair come on now say where are you say church what kind of church is that let me tell you human beings are so desperate for results they honestly don't care who produces it for some of them they are willing to get it from satan and ask for forgiveness later on they are that desperate don't play with the intelligence of an enlightened generation and keep stimulating their expectations and then they do not get the substance of it this is my call that Joshua Selman you need to step up the bar higher than this that when we say God said the nations will respect it because there is power that backs his speakings lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry Lord I am available invest greater levels of your power upon my life someone is praying upon my life the extent of his ability he's able to do above all that we ask or think there is sufficient power available to the body there is sufficient power available in Christ sufficient power to bring witness to the name of the Lord sufficient power to lift the downcast sufficient power to heal the sick but it is still residing with the Christ through his spirit for some reason it's not been able to find sufficient expression in our world oh speak from the heavens and the earth will sing Oh, speak from your throne, and I'll hear from the earth. My altar is calling me. Oh, my hunger is calling me. Oh, oh, speak from the heavens. And the earth will hear Oh, speak from the heavens And I'll hear from the earth My altar is calling you My altar is calling you Hallelujah, hear me the world, Africa, and even in this nation, we are going through challenging economic phases. It's not just a Nigerian problem. Isn't it amazing that the greatest victims of this Holocaust are believers? And yet we say it does not matter. It is a shame to our conviction. It is testing everything we claim to know about God. His love, His mercy, His kindness. It is giving justification to people to backslide. While our work with God is not about money, only a wicked king becomes unconcerned about the welfare of his people. By the privilege of leadership, everyone's, and again, I think about the welfare of my people as human as I am. It is evil for me to fold my arms and watch my people serve God and then go through things and I can help. If I can't help, I step in. This is me, a man. Do you know how many believers have compromised in the last one, two years because of economic hardship?
and we are still blinded we don't yet see that that is a strategy satan is using and yet nobody can say restore and we keep bragging around emoji is the result receive a job how many people have the job receive breakthrough someone comes and then the worst part of it is that they package a seed and come to kneel down and sow it into our lives believing we ourselves is not even working in our own lives so we have to depend on manipulation oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from the heavens now hear from the earth my altar is calling you oh God. if jesus could speak to a man and tell the person go to the sea and catch a fish coin will come out what does it take for a man of god to say in the name of jesus you are not lazy you are doing something i bring a spiritual advantage to what you are doing but the truth is that it is not working human beings are not dummies they are not stupid if we do not contend for the power of god i promise you regardless what social media Parents and a certain generation have pledged their loyalty to God. Whether it works or not, they love him more than results. But there is a generation of angry, inquisitive people rising who will say, justify my coming to church. Justify it. And I'm praying that we'll have answers for that generation. That they will not rise and say, I have been attending church for 10 years. I was better off before I came to church. Do you know the amount of young people who don't go to church again in Europe and America? They say it boldly. They come up and say, I don't go to church again. I watch my parents. They serve God. Some of them serve God as missionaries and pastors. They couldn't afford the school fees. What kind of a God is that? I will never serve such a God. No. Whereas our grandfathers served idols, they were uneducated, but they brought proof. They brought proof of a bumper harvest. They brought proof of children. They brought proof of whatever it is. Somebody will steal and they'll say, whoever stole, let him start running as a madman. They will catch that man from the market and bring him and say, so you stole. He say, yes, I'm sorry. Then he will recover. And yet when church, oh, did there are angels at Alat. They were at Alat when they stole from you. They didn't do anything. Something is wrong with our understanding. Let's return to the place of power. I'm telling you this. Hallelujah. Do you know the average pastor who prays for a sick person? Honestly, the sick person does not even believe he will be healed. So when they say pray for me, what they mean is add to your experiment. Hoping that one will work. Not Peter. He enters a house and sees the mother-in-law of someone and says, what is going on here? They say, mama has been sick. He said, no, not when I'm here. I come as an ambassador. Mama, stand up. Go and cook for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I was told about one of the fathers of faith in the West many years ago. Someone came to meet him. I think the person had annoyed him or something. And when he saw him coming, he told him, one more step close to me. And they will carry your dead body one more step who has the audacity to tell a kidnapper that one more step and it's your dead body that they will carry you see how we don't even believe it
and you will hear that from a crusade while people were returning people who did not fear God tying charms carried all those people plus the speaker that was used plus the salvation card they all took it to the wilderness Abba no sir no sir no sir by the time five people die in three days for trying to touch your family the, nobody tells anybody don't attack this family he says from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom suffered violence how does someone go to a native doctor and plan over a pastor and it actually works and kills the man I hope you know many of the challenges in people's lives is demonically engineered we need to wake up oh something is wrong we need to wake up I tell you we need to wake up we need to wake up we need to return to the place of power the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to the name of the Lord the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to priesthood the embarrassment that powerlessness is bringing to the body of Christ is getting out of hand oh let there be a people the worship team got it well they sang about that army they sang about that army it will start with a few people who are desperate and say we will not lie to ourselves again we celebrate what has been done before us but god lift up this bar and take us to the chambers of the spirit where we will encounter genuine power genuine power power to lift power to heal power to heal to hear I get delighted in my heart when I hear people come to testify it is consoling that while we hunger for more at least we are happy seeing that the power of God is working pray in one minute Lord I am available I am available in this season oh let me be one of the factors that takes away reproach out of your name away from your name many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated power many of our families still serve idols because we have not demonstrated genuine priesthood take a minute to pray take a minute to pray From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be known. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, please be seated. I believe a rain will fall in this place now. I believe that. Let me give you number three. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The third thing we learn from Paul is that as abundant as this power is, please listen now, it says it is according to the power that works in us. These possibilities beyond what we ask, beyond what we think is limited by a rule. I want you to listen now. The rule is that it is affected by the power that works in us, not the power available to work the power that works in us not the power available to walk there is limitless power available to walk but what the nations will see is the power 
that works in us not the power available in Christ are we learning now this is very powerful I wrote something here and I want you to please listen according to the power that works in us means limited by the allowance that our consecration our yieldedness and our personal press gives the spirit when the Bible says according to the power that works in us it means God can be constrained his power can be limited by the space that the saints give for that power to flow out limited limited by the allowance that our consecration limited by the allowance that our yieldedness limited by the allowance that our personal press gives the spirit to manifest that power wow now we come to the subject of the holy spirit and the believer here paul haven't justified the fact that god is all powerful and he's willing to allow such tremendous dimensions of his power to show up in the world of men he wants to get glory in the church and the way he gets glory in the church is to make tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working but he's saying that in as much as that is a reality the power that comes out through every believer is the dimension of power that the nations will see that means if they see a weak Jesus that weak Jesus came through the lens of a weak believer are we together now it is according to the power that worketh in us for many years I did not understand that scripture I just meant it's according to the power that flows from the Holy Spirit and that is correct but then I got to understand by the Spirit that it is beyond that it means the allowance that is given to the Holy Spirit by every believer is the limit to which his power flows like a river now I have taught you here that the Holy Spirit listen carefully is both the custodian and the conveyor of God's power the Holy Spirit is both the custodian and the conveyor everything power is within his office the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit it is impossible to do and discuss the business of power isolating the person the office and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed the word the word was anointed had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all that that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Jesus as the word had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost there is mentioned again Acts chapter 19 from verse 2 he met certain disciples and he said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said we've not even heard that means if there is a power problem within the believers there is something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that believers need to learn we have understood the word and honestly I tell you commendably there is a very sound communication of God's word across the body but I think that most people have not come to appreciate the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit I am personally convinced that that is one of the the missing links we have not incorporated a thorough knowledge of the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit we understand principles nothing wrong with that we understand mysteries nothing wrong with that but we have not engaged the person and the office of the Spirit to make tremendous power available through us there is none of these people the saints especially in modern history who have been used mightily by God they were people of the world but they will tell you that they were people who understood and had a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit 
I do not know anybody who walks in authentic power at any level who has not cultivated a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is both the conveyor, the custodian, and even the administrator of God's power. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, I believe. Please give it to us. There's a, there's a name. I like what the Holy Spirit is called here. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Life. Say that after me. The Spirit. He's not just called the helper, the advocate, the paraclete as we call it. He is called here the Spirit of Life. And that there is an operation that powers him in the life of the believer. It's called the law of the Spirit of Life. An operation that releases the full potential of the Spirit of Life. And it can bring freedom and liberty to men. Let me tell you this. I credit a lot of the happenings in my life and this ministry today to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I do not ignore the word of God. This ministry is called Koinonia. There is a reason why it is called. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship, the sharing together, the participation of the Holy Spirit to rest and to abide with you forever. Many believers have not come into rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, let me repeat one last time, is the custodian, the conveyor, and even the administrator of the power of God. If there is scarceness of power flowing through you, in diagnosing the problem, you need to diagnose your relationship with the Holy Spirit and then diagnose your yieldedness. Let me say this very quickly. When it has to do with the ministry of life and power, the Holy Spirit is called a river. Jesus began to speak and he made a very profound statement. He said on the third day of the feast, he said, if anyone thirst, let him come. Let him drink. And he said that out of his belly, listen carefully. I know you sing it, but now just listen. Because many people who sing that song don't honestly know what they are singing. They just like the song and they believe it is true. But he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. I think that should be John 7. Am I right? Verse 30. Is it 39? Look for it for me. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39 now says, This spake he, this spake he of the Spirit, this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on should receive. So that river he's talking about is speaking about the life giving ministry of the Holy Spirit flowing through the saints, and he likens it to a river. If you know anything about a river, it is not static. Hallelujah. One time they were doing a tour for us in the US and just the history of America. And they showed, you know, a, a particular river that was flowing. It looked like just a tiny river, but it flowed right into the sea. And then they were telling a lot of stories around it. You know, it was used to generate electricity at one point, you know, at the infancy of the whole history of, of America. But I was, I was intrigued by the fact that what you would call a small river, they said sometimes when the rains are very heavy, I mean, it could just fill a particular space and I was just watching that river. The Bible says out of your belly. It's, it doesn't mean out of your stomach. No, there's nothing in your stomach for the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's just your digestive system. When it says belly, it doesn't mean your stomach. It's a prophetic expression. Are we together? That from your innermost being, your spirit, watch this now. So where does it flow from? He never said it flows from the throne. When you read Revelations, you will see that there is a river that flows from the throne. Am I right on that? And that river brings healings. The Bible says that it flows to trees and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Now Jesus is speaking and he says, out of your belly, that when you receive the spirit, something happens and out of your belly will flow 
rivers of living waters. The question is, it flows to where? Flows to where? In the similitude of the river that flows from the throne. Because now a throne has been established within you where Christ is Lord. And there is a parallel of what happened that John saw in the throne. That a river came out from the throne and it brought life, it brought healing. And because you have given allowance for that throne to be replicated within you, there must also be a parallel expression that a river begins to flow and that that river flows through you it brings healing you want to know what the river does go to Ezekiel chapter 47 he measured a thousand cubits it was to my ankle he measured a thousand cubits it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the Bible says it was an overflowing river please give it to us and as the river flow, it begins to bring every death into life. That's what it does. It's a life-giving river. Let it flow right here, right now. Afterwards, he measured a thousand, and it was a river I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, and a river that could not be passed over. Watch now, verse 6. Verse 6, please. He said, Son of man, he brought me and caused me to return, and you know, to the brink of the river. Verse 7. There's something I'm looking for. And when he saw that, he saw many trees on one side and on the other. Verse 8. And he said that this one, they go down to the desert. Where does the river go to? towards the east of the country and towards the desert and into the sea and he said it comes into the sea and the waters waters there talks of men the waters shall be healed that when that river flows it gets into waters and then brings healing verse 8 I, verse 9 i think it is i'm looking for where the fish it shall come to pass that everything that lives which move it whithersoever the river shall come it shall what look at this mystery it is already alive but that if it touches that river it gets life indeed and then it says and there shall be a great multitude of fish say harvest one more time say harvest because the waters shall come for they shall be healed and everything shall live whither the river cometh that's the implication of the ministry of the holy spirit that when the holy spirit is allowed to find expression in an individual now watch this there are two ways the holy spirit makes a vessel a worthy conduit of power number one it is called renewal. It's an inner walking of the Spirit. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.